We have a re- rather urgent podcast to talk to you about. We have an important deadline and a lot of questions that people have been asking. So as everyone knows, um, ERC was a big thing when it became available, and uh, a lot of people rushed in to go take it. And in that time, there was a lot of uh, fuzziness about how things were going to be processed. And as they continued to allow more ERC to be claimed, they went and had that moratorium yep. and put a pause on all ERC uh, all the way to December 2023. And uh, from there, uh, everything's been on hold, yep. basically. <laughs> and what's happening now, Don, is that we have kind of an urgent deadline that's coming up because a lot of people are going, I filed for this, uh, this ERC, but I haven't received my money yet. Should I or should I not um, file my tax return to reflect that? <laughs> well, <clears throat> when they came out with the ERC, they actually put very clear guidelines on when you had to file. So for any benefits that you received for 2020, mm-hmm. you're mandated, if you filed on time, that you have to do it by April 15th of this year of 2024. Now, if you file an extension, mm-hmm. that's good news because you're going to have... We call it SOL, statute of limitations. That can stand for a couple things, of course. But statute of limitations, meaning that uh, whatever the date is, so let's say tomorrow, May 17th, Mm -hmm. is your statute of limitations. That means you have to file, even though you've not received your money, Mm -hmm. you've got to file that amended 2020 tax return, your corporate return, your S Corp or your LLC, uh, uh, Schedule C, however you function, C Corp, it's got to be filed by that date. Wow. So if you're looking for options, you really have none. You have, <laughs> That's to, you, a fact. You have to do this. You have to file your 2020 uh, ERC tax returns and re- ERC reflected on those. Um, otherwise, you're going to get in, in some trouble with that. Yep. So There'll be penalties and interest. And just keep in mind, too, that um, now certainly the IRS could make some uh, adjustments for this year because the reality is there's a lot of people out there. We have clients who have filed for the ERC and have yet to receive the funds, and that's really the issue. So let's say, for example, uh, Ryan, if um, one of our clients was going to get, let's say, two, three hundred thousand dollars, and but they've filed for it, they just haven't received it, and it was for the year 2020, not the 2021, mm-hmm. but just for 2020, um, and they, you know. It, they've got to file this. Well, when you file this, it's going to be, so let me give you a little more details. Mm-hmm. So to, let's say 300000 just for illustration's mm-hmm. sake. So that means $300,000 of your payroll mm-hmm. that you deducted for 2020 is now being reversed. So now you have to recognize that $300,000. And let's say you're an S corporation. So now you have $300,000 more in profit, mm-hmm. which if you're an S corporation flows back to your personal tax return, and now you have $300,000 more on your personal tax return. And if you're in the beautiful state of California <laughs> uh, or New York, some of the, uh, New Jersey, some of the highest tax states in the country, 50% of that could very well be what you owe. So 150 grand. Yeah, Uncle Sam's already knocking at your door. Yeah. <laughs> he's waiting to ring the doorbell is what he's waiting to do. Oh, yeah. Um, so let's talk about this. So um, what can a business owner do? So a business owner that took ERC, they have to pay the taxes now for this. Is there anything that they can do with no guarantee that they're even going to get the, these funds? Yeah, uh, there's a provision in the code that allows you to go back and um, – if. For example, you filed and you didn't either get it because you weren't eligible or and, and you went ahead and amended your returns or you didn't get the, the amount that you had filed for. Mm-hmm. And so ultimately, you, you go back and amend the return and again and show that you have uh, that you did not receive that. And of course, with their, their systems that are in place, that will be verified. Gotcha. And uh, so there is one thing you can do as well. It's called a protective claim. Mm-hmm. Right? That's, that's what I was referring yeah, to. The absolutely, protective claim. Protective mm-hmm. claim. So you can pretty much uh, go against, uh, if you don't get your money, basically you get a refund back for Correct. the taxes you pay. Well, here's the problem, Ryan. I mean, the, the reality is that we have people who out here, like in my example, who've got to come up with 150 grand mm-hmm. to pay these taxes, even though they've not received the ERC money. Yep. Or if you're in a small, if you're, you know, let's say it's 30%, that's another, you know, it's almost $100,000. So it, it creates a huge challenge, you know, for a lot of business owners out there because some of them got some pretty substantial credits. Uh, I know personally some that got over, you know, seven figures. And so because of that, you know, those are unpleasant surprises. Gotcha. So um, for, these, uh, for these ERCs that are coming in for this year, the important thing that we have to remember is, uh, with that deadline coming up, that SOL coming up, you need 
to go ahead and get that taken care of. Yes. You need to go to whoever prepared uh, your ERC or your tax preparer, whoever, and you need to show this and reflect this on your tax returns, get those taken away. If you have an extension, you do have a little bit more time. You still need to get this taken care of. And if you have an extension, you should probably look into that um, the protective uh, thing that you can do that. So, yeah, so yeah. The, the big thing here, of course, you need to find out when you filed your taxes. Yeah. I, I can tell you we talk to hundreds and hundreds of clients every year that don't know when that was. So the way you can find out if you don't, if it's not actual physical return that you can see, you can ask your accountant if you filed electronically. It's an 8879 that, uh, that you signed to file electronically. That's one. The other is you can actually go to the IRS website, go onto their portal, and actually look and see when it was registered that you filed your, your taxes because that's your statute of limitations. So if you did file an extension, if you didn't file an extension, and today's May the 16th, you're beyond that already. So you need to consult your tax advisor, your accountant, uh, get this rectified and make sure. Now, again, Ryan, you know that the reality is because there's so much that it was filed with the IRS in September, of course, the House representatives passed that bill that would uh, put a deadline of January 31st, I believe it was, or 30th, um, as the limitation on when you could file. So there's, I uh, uh, read this just uh, a couple days ago, 1.5 million claims in there right now. Wow. Yeah, 1.5 million claims. So you got a million and a half claims in there that have never received their funds, but they're now going to be, you know, having to pay taxes on. So I believe the IRS is going to have to address this. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, your accountant will be notified. Uh, we get publications on a daily basis that let us know what's going on. And, of course, if that was the case, we will make sure we get this out into one of our other podcasts. Absolutely. And just on a, um, a little side note here, in your opinion, with the new tax bill that uh, we're waiting on uh, mm -hmm. with R&D and everything like that, um, do you think that all these 1.5 million uh, applications are going to get processed if this tax bill passes? Or <laughs> yeah. what's your thoughts on that? Well, I'll be, I'll be honest with you. I believe the IRS is just kind of sitting and waiting mm -hmm. because, you know, they – the reality is, the you know, for 2020, it's done with. I mean, the, that came up to April 15th. But if they don't pass the Senate bill, which we expect they will, but if they don't, um, then the free-for-all is still out there. Now, I will tell you that the IRS is scrutinizing these claims very, very thoroughly. I mean, they're ultimately doing an audit before they send out the money uh, because there's been so much fraud. I mean, just a uh, uh, just prime example of, there was a guy up in New Jersey, just to kind of throw some entertainment in here. So he thought, well, I'll make hay while the sun shines. So he reached out to all the Uber drivers and Lyft drivers and said, hey, you know, you can get this ERC. And when you get it, just split it 50-50 mm -hmm. with me. Well, because it's not an employee and you can't get the ERC on yourself as owner, that's a fraudulent claim. And it was millions and millions of dollars. That's actually became the straw that broke the camel's back. Mm -hmm. And we got this from our tax attorney who actually was talking to the attorney uh, from the IRS who handles the ERC stuff. Always so. going to be opportunists out there. Unfortunately, if there's money involved, there's going to be criminals. Yeah, absolutely, so. absolutely. Yeah. Well, we hope this is helpful. Anything yeah. else, Don? I think that's to? pretty much it. Like I said, make sure you, you talk with your tax advisor, your CPA, your accountant. Make sure that uh, you're compliant uh, and uh, because you don't want to have to deal with Uncle Sam later on. Uh, hopefully, they've communicated this to you already, but if not, make sure you reach out to them today. Make sure you hit the like button and the share button. And uh, we appreciate you being on today. Thank you.